Welcome to On The Beat everyone, I'm Troy Thompson. Joining me today is Dr. Ricky Johnston and Dr. William Gillespie of Gastroenterology Associates of Columbus. And today we're talking all about a symptom called H. pylori. Welcome to the show, both of you. Thanks, nice appreciate. to see you here together. Yes. I want to start off with, explain to everyone at home what H. pylori, uh, pylori is. So it's the abbreviation or shortened name is for uh, Helicobacter pylori. So that's, that's a shortened name? Yeah, H. pylori is what we call it. Oh, gosh. So it is a bacteria that grows in the stomach lining um, that, you know, is very common. A lot of people don't even know they have it. Most bacteria cannot live in your stomach because it's so acidic. This bacteria, for whatever reason, the way that it is, it thrives in the high acid environment of the stomach where most other bacteria would, would die. So how do we get it? Is it by drinking bad water or... Because when you say bacteria, we always think it's something we've eaten or drunk. Right. It's something that's actually everywhere. It's in the environment. Um, it's very common. Uh, some people will just be eating, drinking, will get it in their stomach and it'll live there for a long time. Certain parts of the world, it's more prevalent. Um, really? But it's really something that's, that's everywhere. Um, well, apparently gastroenterologists apparently have a higher incidence of it too. Oh, really? We're around it so much. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's airborne. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, 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 just with our patients. Oh, okay. I could have had a natural disaster then. Yeah. What are some of the symptoms? Explain to everyone at home who may be... So a lot of people come in complaining of lots of different things, and that leads us on a path to figure out what it is. But H. pylori can cause bloating, like the sensation of your stomach swelling. It can cause pain. It can cause nausea. Um, it generally doesn't cause diarrhea despite it being a bacteria. A lot of people yeah. think that it can be a diarrhea type illness. It's usually not that, but more just kind of the upper stomach type symptoms. Okay, how do we diagnose it? Well, there's a few different ways. The best way or the gold standard is to, to do an endoscopy and take biopsies of the stomach. Really? Um, that's obviously a little more invasive. We have a test we can do in the office where you basically breathe into a tube and it'll tell us if you have it or not. Um, we can also do stool tests, and then lastly, there's a blood test that's not not the best test, but it is uh, sometimes helpful. Okay. What about the treatments? Are they complicated? Any side <laughs> effects? Anything like well, that? Well, the, the treatment can be tough. It's a pretty stiff antibiotic regimen, so it's usually two antibiotics combined with an antacid. So the antacid, by lowering the acid levels in the stomach, that makes the bacteria more susceptible to the antibiotics that we prescribe, and so it's usually a combination of antibiotics and and acids for about a two week regimen, but it can be tough and people can have some side effects from the antibiotics, which makes it difficult. But if you are diagnosed with this, the key with this treatment of this is to make sure you take every single dose of the pill to get rid of it. That I we, know. We, we some people always say, say when they're taking antibiotics, I'm sure you hear it all the time, I'm feeling better, I don't need them right, anymore. Right. And then bang, two weeks later, you've got it back again, right? Right. I want to ask you, is this something that, I, I ask these questions a lot, are they hereditary or is it just something that we pick up in the environment, like you said? Yeah, it's just, it's just generally something that we pick up in the environment. So uh, is it from it, bad eating as well, like not living a healthier lifestyle? Not necessarily. Okay. It's something, there's not really a good way to avoid getting it. A lot yeah. of people have it and it doesn't necessarily cause problems and they don't know they have it. Yeah. Um, but it's just something that's kind of out there in the environment. There's not any particular thing you can do to avoid it. Um, One point, it is the most common cause of ulcers. I meant to mention that. Well, I was go. about to okay. say to you, gone untreated. Yeah side effects of untreating this The issue. big one is, is, is ulcers. Really? Uh, so it's the most common cause of, of stomach ulcers. Um, and they're painful. They are. But, you know, a lot of people will get told they have an ulcer just by being diagnosed with this condition. Right. But that doesn't mean you have an ulcer. The only way to diagnose an ulcer would be to have an endoscopy and actually yeah. visualize it. But beyond ulcers, it's thought to be a, a, a cancer risk. It's a risk really? for stomach cancer. Yeah. That's crazy. So that's, that's why it's so important to treat it. You guys always give us great information. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank goodness you're doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. If you want to find out more information, there it all is up on the screen for you. We'll be back after this short break.